Well, it's never too late to learn anything new, even when you're in your golden years, whether it's baking, farming or digital skills. The National Silver Academy has been offering more than a thousand courses just for seniors. That's right. It now wants to reach out to over 70,000 more people across the next five years. And joining us in the studio to discuss this is So Sweeping. She is CEO of Council for Third Age. That's the organization that runs the academy. Welcome, Ms. So, and thank you for joining us this evening. Thank so you. I took a look at the website and the courses that are available there. Uh, they cover a broad swathe of topics, uh, even uh, things like home repair, made easy as an example. Uh, are there specific courses that are, are very popular that everyone's rushing to, though? Um, okay, usually this, the courses that you see on the website is deliberately... Um, plan that way to give a diversity of courses to address the different needs and interests of seniors. But we do find that it is very popular. Um, the popular courses are like TCM and people, uh, even for pet care, people like to learn more about how to take care of their pets or even grandparenting. And these are courses that um, they don't have a chance to learn when they are, let's say, very busy in their work. And also other courses such as uh, hobby base or arts, calligraphy, uh, painting, these are also popular co courses that seniors like to take. Do you find that with maybe less popular but good idea for them to take up, are there ways to encourage, draw and incentivize senior citizens to take up courses that they may not immediately like but maybe actually good for them? Um, indeed, yes. We actually look at core um, areas in which a senior would may, may, uh, let a, that a senior may need to know as they move into their retirement years. And one area is the mental well-being. So we have specially curated courses on mental well-being. And the other area that we, we think that will be very um, important is financial adequacy. Financial adequacy, usually seniors are concerned about uh, retirement adequacy, whether they have enough and whether they should extend the number of years that they should work to save up. Uh, so that they, are, um, they have sufficient savings to retire well or they look at the amount of savings that they have and decide how to budget it. So we teach them the budgeting part on the years that they, they will be uh, in retirement. Mm. And, and what you're saying is it's never too late to learn. You might be over the age of 60, over the age of 70, but you can still uh, do something to empower yourself towards that financial journey as an example of financial adequacy. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about making choices, though, because I'm thinking that, you know, just like us here, we're all drawn to different interests. We might be uh, drawn to a specific topic because we like it. Right. Uh, and not necessarily because it's going to give us useful skills. Mm. So does it matter what course we choose? And is there guidance on your end for that? Yeah, for National Silver Academy, actually, we want to encourage seniors to start their learning journey, learning for learning's sake. It's not so much to, uh, you know, to go for a course that you want to upskill to get another job. Most of the time, they really want to learn things that matter to them in their, in their next phase of life. So how do we guide them? Uh, we have a hotline that they can call if, if a senior wants to start learning but don't know where to start. They usually call our hotline. We have staff to help them and ask them a few questions to guide them along. And then we can help them to navigate the website. That's one way. The other one is once they have taken a course, uh, we, have, we will kind of recommend if you like this, you probably would like that as well. So that is also something that we put in our website. It's a new feature that we have put in our website to help them to look at other areas which could be of interest to them. All right, I take it you run an academy, so this is going to have to be sustainable. So, for example, you employ teachers, you need facilities, you need resources as well. You want enough people to sign up to warrant the cost of hiring a teacher. So when you want to offer new plans, what are your criteria for, for deciding what do we offer? To what level of proficiency do we offer this course? Okay, first of all, I have to say that National Silver Academy is not an 
It's not a building by itself. In fact, the courses that we offer are offered by all our partners. And we have more than 52 partners who are taking courses that they have but are relevant for seniors and make it available for seniors. So um, for sustainability, and, and, and uh, which you mentioned, uh, this course actually subsidise seniors who are 50 years and above. It's actually very young for to say that 50 years is a senior. But I think the intent really is to help people to start that journey earlier, as, mm. as early as possible, so that uh, in their transition to retirement, they don't just jump into something that they never had a chance to do before. And therefore, um, the, I would say that the government is very generous to offer that to 50 years and above to start that learning journey. So as for how it is sustainable, we we actually look at um, the we, we make it very affordable by looking at how our partners price their courses. They have their trainers, their teachers. We do we do have a sensing of how much this costs, and we do um, take a portion to subsidize. And we want a co-payment from the seniors as a form of commitment to say, I want to come to learn. Am I willing to pay that twenty or fifty percent right. of it? Yeah. You have to have some skin in the game. Yeah, that's right. right. So your academy it works as a facilitator. Yes, uh, that's right. Um, you know, working longer as we age, it has its supporters, but it also has its, you know, critics as well. The, the idea that we still have to kind of upskill and uh, participate in lifelong learning, doesn't matter how old you get, there are no kind of, you know, there's no sort of silver or golden horizon where we can just not do anything, mm. right? Uh, so it depends on, on which people you're talking to. But we need this in Singapore because we are an aging population, right? And there, there are economic repercussions for being an older person who isn't working. But what specifically should we be focusing on in terms of lifelong learning for older people as we go forward? Um, for the for the older people, usually their concerns are, I would say, mainly three areas when we talk to them. The first area is always about their health. And that's got to do with their diet, their exercise and their lifestyle. And then the second one that they usually tell us is financial adequacy, which I mentioned just now about, you know, planning for retirement. And the third one is about social connectedness. So when they are out of a, when they are no longer in a corporate world, or rather when work is no longer their main focus, I think that's where social connectedness becomes very important because they need to be cognitively engaged. And when they go for learning, first of all, if it's, a, if it's an on-site learning, they will have to go to that place. So there's some physical activity involved. And then they get to meet new people. And when they get to new people, when they talk to people, there's that emotional uh, enrichment. And at the same time, if they make new friends, then there will be that social connectedness with the community. So these are these are actually very important for for seniors. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for those nuggets of information, keeping with the golden age uh, imagery. We'll be speaking with uh, So Sweeping, CEO of the Council for Third Age, on the factors to consider when we think about aging. <laughs> 